Welcome to 4.5. We are starting to gain some momentum here and really understand what's happening. Remember back in uh, 4.2, we said that in what it means when we say that two triangles are congruent is that there are six pairs of, um, what would you call them? Corresponding features, six pairs of corresponding features that are congruent. These uh, three angles, pairs of angles are congruent and these three pairs of sides are also congruent. So if you wanted to prove that these triangles were congruent, you'd have to go through and measure all 12 of these different features of those two triangles. That is too long for us. This is the modern day. We want to be able to do things faster. And so that's why we came up with this, actually an old thing, uh, came up with the SSS uh, congruence theorem that if I have two or three, three pairs of corresponding sides, that is sufficient to prove congruence. And now we are moving on even farther and we're going to be looking at proving triangles congruent by SAS and HL. Our essential question is how do I use sides and angles now? Last time we just looked at sides, but now we're doing sides and angles to prove congruence. SAS, what does that sound? What, what does that mean? Don't give me some sass, man. This is a side angle side is what it refers to. It's an acronym. And it's telling us, or the theorem says, that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the two sides and or two sides and the included angle of a second triangle then the two triangles are congruent the key emphasis here is on the word included it has to be your included angle what they're saying is if you have one pair of sides that are congruent and another pair of sides that are congruent. Now, of course, if we knew that this third pair of sides were congruent, then we would have side, 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 and we could prove congruence. But we do not know what the length of these two sides are, but we do know what the measure of these two angles are. And this angle is the included angle uh, in this or between uh, these two sides. So please write this in your notes there. The included angle is between and created by the two sides. Here's your two sides, they're coming along. And when those two sides intersect, they create this included angle. In other words, angle S is not included between these two sides, nor is angle T. It is on the outside here. Only angle R is included between these two sides. And here are your other two sides and the other triangle. And this angle that we know the measure of uh, is also included between these two sides. So actually I said that we know the measure of the angle. I actually don't need to know the, the angle of the measure or the measure of the angle. All that I need to know is that these two so angles that are the included angles between two pairs of uh, congruent sides, as long as those are congruent, those included angles, then I have SAS, and that is sufficient to prove congruence. So let's go ahead and mark this up. I have one pair of sides that are congruent. I have a pair of angles that are congruent, and I have a, another pair of sides that are congruent. Or let me say it this way. I have one pair of sides that are congruent and a second pair of sides that are congruent and I also have the included angles that are congruent. Make sense? So I have side, angle, side. Now wait a second. You might be looking at this and say, hey, isn't that a bad word? Don't you have ASS? And you're right, that is a bad word. Uh, because that is not sufficient to prove congruence. And I do not have ASS. I have side, angle, side. Because you see, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, draw it right in here, yeah, arrow towards that A, and see how that A is between 
the two S's, so it is uh, the included angle between those two sides. And let's write included angle. Okay? Because if you had ASS, that angle is not the included, not, or the non included, or whatever, how do you want to say that? Non included uh, angle. And that is a bad word. Do not, do not be a donkey. Don't be a donkey, man. Let me, let me show that to you. Here, hope you can see all of this. Here we have a side angle side. I have a pair of sides that are congruent and a pair of angles that are congruent and a second pair of sides that are congruent. Let's say it this way. I have one pair of sides that are congruent and a second pair of sides that are congruent and then the included angles are congruent. So those are fixed, right? And so what's uh, independent is this uh, other side here. So this side can be, this angle can be anywhere it wants to and also this length can be anywhere it wants to. But notice that no matter what I do, I can change the length of this side, I can move the angle. In order to create a triangle, that triangle that I create is going to be congruent with the other triangle. There is no other way. Once I have one pair of sides and a second pair of sides and the included angle, that fixes, that freezes this thing. So there's no other way for me to make a triangle other than a triangle that is congruent to the original triangle. Whereas, if I have, if I'm trying to be a, one of those guys, a, a donkey, then I have, let's see, I have the angle uh, here that is fixed, and then I have a side, and I have a second side. But notice this angle is not the included angle between these two sides. And notice that I can create two different triangles with this. I can create a smaller triangle and I can open this up and create a larger triangle that would still have angle, side, side. So angle, side, side, or you could say, say it backwards, side, side, angle is not sufficient to prove congruence, but side, angle, side is sufficient to prove congruence. So let's put this theorem to work. Here we go. We have a diagram here and we want to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And so what do I know about these two triangles? Well, I do know that this pair of sides are congruent with each other because I have the tick mark there. And I also know that this side, this diagonal, for the top triangle is congruent to this side of the bottom triangle. Forgot to silence my phone, it's my wife calling. And so, like I said, this uh, side for the top triangle is congruent to this side with the bottom triangle. How can we say that segment AC is congruent to segment AC? You're right, it's reflexive property. So I could say, here's my big S, I have a pair of sides here that are congruent, and I have another pair of sides that are congruent. And I also can say that these two angles are congruent. And how can I say that? Well, I have, I can think of this line cutting across. How do I do this here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here's a, a line that's cutting across these other two lines. And what is that line? What's this uh, red line called that cuts across those other two lines? You're right, that's a transversal. And remember that uh, these two angles then would be called your alternate interior angles created by a transversal that cuts across two lines. And what is true about alternate interior angles? Are they congruent? No, wait a second. They are only congruent when these two lines are what? Are parallel. And yes, this diagram is telling us that these two lines are parallel because we have those two little arrows there. So I also have a pair of angles. Again, notice how I'm just labeling one of these triangles. I'm just labeling the top triangle here. And so these pair of angles are congruent and so, so now the question is, do I have 
side, angle, side, or do I have angle, side, side? And the answer is I do have side, angle, side. Because this angle, this angle here, is the included angle that is created by or between these two uh, sides. Okay? So that is sufficient to prove that these two triangles are congruent, and I have finished my proof. Let's look at example two in the book here. Here is a circle. This is the center of the circle. And what can I determine about these two triangles? I can prove that these two triangles are congruent. First of all, uh, going from the center to the circle, what is that called? It's called the radius. And that's this is also a radius. This is also a radius. So, hey, hey, in fact, all of these are congruent to each other. In fact, what kind of a triangle is it that has two sides that are congruent to each other? And you're right, that's an isosceles triangle. And so I here I have a pair, let's make a big S, a pair of sides that are congruent with each other. I have a second pair of sides that are congruent with each other. But I really don't know about this third side, uh, whether or not it's a uh, whether or not these are congruent to each other. But I do know, wait a second, look, these two angles, what is true? What is the relationship? between these two angles. These are vertical angles. And as you know, vertical angles are always congruent. Therefore, I have a pair of angles that are congruent. And so now the question is, do I have side, angle, side, or do I have angle, side, side? And you will notice and recognize that this angle is the included angle between uh, those two sides. So I do have side, angle, side. That is sufficient to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So purely by geometry and theorems, I know for sure that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now. I dropped my paper, had to pick it up. And go ahead and uh, do uh, these two problems on your own. I'm not gonna set it up for you. You know how to do this. Let me, let me just give you, remind you, hey, what is this upside down T? What does that mean? It means perpendicular. Sometimes you guys get snagged on that perpendicular. Okay, so that's perpendicular. Of course, you know that that's uh, congruence. So you should be able to figure this out on your own. Let's look at uh, right triangles now. So we've seen um, side, side, side. We've done that from 4.4. We just looked at... Uh, side angle side and now we're going to look at uh, HL and what does HL refer to its hypotenuse leg hypotenuse what's a hypotenuse you remember the hypotenuse is the longest side on a right triangle so in other words this HL only refers to right triangles because it's only right triangles that have a hypotenuse and remember that the hypotenuse is the side, yes, it's the longest side, but the easiest way to, do it, to identify it is that it's the side that's across from the right angle. So just get in the habit, whenever you see a right angle symbol, then draw your arrow to the side across from that and then write the word hypotenuse. So please do write that word, get accustomed to spelling it and also saying it. So say that word aloud a number of times, hypotenuse, and uh, get that drilled into your, your mind. And so what this theorem is saying is that if you have two right triangles, right, you can only have HL, you can only have a, a hypotenuse if you have a right triangle. So if you have uh, two right triangles and all that you need is just one pair of sides that are congruent and a second pair of sides that are congruent but one of those pairs have to be the hypotenuse okay so um, and that's sufficient to prove congruence so what we would do then is uh, put a big H uh, here I have a, a pair of hypotenuse I think is how you say it or hypotenuses I should figure that out I think it's hypotenuse and then I have another pair of sides, but in a right triangle, the other sides, the non-hypotenuse, 
are called legs. So let's put a big L, capital L, there. So we have a pair of hypotenai and we have a pair of legs. And that is sufficient to prove congruence between those two triangles. That is all that I need to be able to prove congruence. So let me walk you through the quick, quick example and it will be done. <clears throat> Here is a diagram that they give to us and they give to us that uh, WY, so this entire diagonal here, uh, is congruent to XZ. They also tell me that WZ is congruent to ZY. I guess I could put a little right triangle kind of looking thing there. A little bit confusing when you have a, another uh, segment coming out from there, but for my purposes, let me go and do that. Put your right triangle. Okay, that's a right angle. And then these diagonals are congruent. I really can't mark that up because it's hard to indicate the entire thing. And they're also telling me that X, Y, where's X, Y? X, here's X, Y. Is, okay, that's the same thing. All right, we just did that. Okay, now we want to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Easiest way to do this is to separate these two triangles. So let's bring this W, Z, Y down here just like that and then let's take this XYZ triangle on the right hand side and let's put it in the same orientation in other words the easiest way to do it is just bring this down okay write that same you know, draw that same uh, uh, triangle and then to the right of that draw the exact same right uh, right triangle and then begin to label this right triangle so that the um, the parts are corresponding to each other. So we see here, of course, the Z comes down and it's the Y that is the right angle in the other triangle. So that one's Y. And then what is the top angle? It's uh, X on the right side and it's W on the left triangle. And then if this is your top angle, this angle over here would be the Z. So that's your other one extending over here to the right. So now, I can line these things up. It's easier for me to take this information that's given and draw it on my diagram. And I know that these two, well, wait a second. How do we know that ZY is congruent to YZ? Well, remember, that's the same thing, isn't it? It's the same thing. So it's through reflexive that we know that these two sides are congruent to each other. And then we know these two sides are congruent because that's what they just told us uh, right here, up in this one.